point of About Us pages is to communicate some background, not just about why the business set up, but a, about the character of the person that's actually running the business. And in, in this case, obviously, it's me. And the point, the, the idea is, is that over time, if, if we were to have a, a meeting, one of the things we would talk about in our first meeting would be, who are you? What's your background? And how did you get here? And so with part and parcel of what we advocate in terms of a business, it's really important that I, you, communicate who you are digitally because it means anybody can see it at any time and it has a knock-on effect to the rest of the business. So anyway, enough of that. A bit about me. I mean, I, 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 when I was a, a youngster, um, I left the UK when I was just, just before I was 18, so I was 17 and, and three quarters, but I left the UK, I travelled through Europe, um, India, Malaysia, Australia, and then I came back a couple of years later. And I'd worked in camera shops in Australia and in the UK, and one, and one of the, the final, the, the final uh, camera shop I worked in, I trebled the guy's turnover. And I was really kind of into selling, I wasn't into cameras or anything like that. And from there I got involved in direct selling and my area was in Mayfair, central London. And so I did all the, the typical stuff in back in the day, which was the cold calling in the rain and snow and telly sales and all that kind of stuff. And I did that for a couple of years. So I was employed for a couple of years. And then after that, I set up a business with a business partner and we sold pretty much anything that would go into an office. And so I got a quite an unusual appreciation or awareness, you could say, of what needs to happen within the infrastructure of an office. So we sold everything from, you know, photocopies the size of a room um, to PC networks, furniture, ceilings, partitioning, telecoms, everything. After that, I started, I went out on my own and I went solo again. Um, and at this time, concentrating on telecoms and um, integration of, of, of software and telecoms. And it was a kind of a, a transitional period in the, in the technology market. And I pursued that. and I, I approached it quite differently to other people because I, I, I was looking at the, the systemization of what could be done within a business. And I, I produced documentation and methodologies. I produced a specific ring binder that I sent out to companies that explained the current technologies. And my approach was, well, look, have this ring binder. It's taken a long time to produce. Um, and if you're, if you're looking, you know, in the next 12, 18 months, give us a call. That approach worked because it ultimately um, made me dealer of the year two years running uh, in the UK. And so I, I basically pursued it. But the, the, one of the big factors, though, I think, within my career time in, in business is that I couldn't scale up. And it, it perplexed me and flummoxed me. I just couldn't understand what I was supposed to do to scale up my business profitably. I'm not talking about taking on staff because I had, at one point I had 30, 40 staff working for me. But my logic, my intellect was saying, this, this ain't working. Because if, you, if you're going to scale up, you want to do it profitably. Taking on more people, to me, isn't scaling up. And so I, I constantly looked for a more efficient way of working. And that's why I, I, I was really quite into the, the integration of systems and software and, and telecoms linking into CRM, all that kind of stuff. And it, it perplexed me to the point where... I thought I'm going to have to change. Now, we don't just have those ideas and they just pop into our head and we go and act on them. As directors, of course, we've both got life going on and, and family stuff and all that kind of thing. Um, first business, this is kind of what, what, what makes a person, I guess. Three months after I started my own business, still in, in telecom, um, my daughter died in a bicycle accident. She was out with my wife, my wife at the time. Um, and, and, and my world collapsed. I mean, absolutely collapsed. Uh, three years later, I ended up in the Wellington Hospital in St. John's Wood in London, and I had a quadruple bypass. And by this time, I'm 34. But the, th but the, the big point of that, or the point of these life issues, we're, we're directors, aren't we? <laughs> what do you do? 
you don't get to go, you know, I'm just going to put the company on hold for a bit and go and deal with this and deal with that. You can't. You've got bills to pay. You've got staff to organise and manage. You've got families to look after and so on. So you have no choice as a director. You just get on it. You haven't got a choice. And that you can see how that would kind of dovetail with my drive to understand how to scale a business profitably. How can you make this thing called a business work efficiently even without you being there? And so the culmination of these things, you know, three, uh, three or four years after having the bypass, I got divorced. And that had its own set of problems and dealing with the courts and children, all that kind of stuff. Um, and then a year, about a year or so, a year or so after I separated, I met Liz. And Liz and I hit it off because, lots of reasons, but her children were the same age as mine. And she worked in telecoms. She worked in voice recording. So, of course, natural, natural affinity to absolutely understand what I was doing and everything else. And so over time, with all these different things that were happening and the courts and everything else, it got to a point, a kind of a, a transition point, which was, I'm going to find out how this scaling thing is supposed to work. And so I got involved in marketing. I jacked it all in, stopped and started again and consumed everything that I could do in, in terms of marketing. And when I was doing the, the, the technical stuff, I, I immersed myself in it to the point of being able to install all of it myself, not to be an engineer, but to absolutely sell it properly. And this, I did the same thing in marketing. I, did, I, I immersed myself in everything digital to know everything I possibly could about it, um, because surely that's what needed to be done to understand what these people knew. And I found out <laughs> they didn't know either. So... Because of that, I, I thought, OK, well, I need to. I, th this is nonsense. So I did everything digital that you can imagine. So I built websites. I, I did, did a, a whole raft of things. I mean, one of the other things built on the website side of things, I built this website um, called The Standard. Because one of the other things we did, this kind of life changing thing, um, Liz and I became Christians and we got baptised. And so I pursued that and joined the dots and built a website that was read in, it's now read in 195 countries. So if you can follow this pattern with me, that I'm joining the dots in technology, got that one sussed. Follow the dots in, in Christianity, got that one sussed. And now I'm looking to join the dots in business and marketing to look at how to scale a business properly and efficiently and profitably. So as, as we're following all of this, um, I realised that there's a, a fundamental problem that... Businesses are not getting the exposure that business to consumer businesses are getting, like the, 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 the typical brands and so on and so on. I said, right, OK, this is what we need to do. So everything's set up, produced all this content. It needs to be varied because nobody knows if the person that you're speaking to likes to read stuff, watch stuff or listen to stuff. So you have to produce all of it to accommodate their taste. All made complete sense to me. I produced 110, 120 bits of different content. Well, I was ready to go. And the world came to a halt. <laughs> I mean, I was skipping, skipping years here. We're talking about last year. It all came to a halt. I mean, it took me, I don't know, a couple of years to get everything ready. And then 2020 happened. And the lockdown and pandemic. So I'm like, man, oh man. And we talk about timing. What do we do? How, how, how do we get this movement and I, and, I, and I was almost there I, I knew I was almost there but it and it all fell into place the fundamental problem was marketing automation software and you think well how can that be if you think about this you use marketing automation software you must by definition hide all of your content behind an email form which means Google can't find it period end of nobody can unless they give you an email address so I thought, right, OK, what do we need to do? We need to set things up in a certain way that means it expose, you, you can produce this content that everybody has a certain taste to want to read, watch or listen to. And in doing that, into pr promoting that, you've got to advertise it. To do what the B2C is doing, which is to produce adverts to promote the content. It is as, as simple as that. You create your content and you don't have to do loads of it. Because it was, you know, it's, it's, it's what you need to sell your products. 
you need the adverts to sell them. And anyway, so that's what I did. I set up the adverts, I set up the mechanism that, that sold your content, that sells content to drive people to buy your products, to go and buy them. And the other part is if you want to do that, if you want to make that work efficiently, you change your infrastructure as well in to, to accommodate the content that you're producing. And that that really that that's it in a nutshell. So I've gone from from these kind of blocks from from working for myself and trying to get a technology business to thrive um, and to scale it scale it up, and I couldn't. In parallel to that, we've got all these different life experiences that you, both you and I would have gone through. And it's you know how, how do we deal with that? And then whilst looking at joining the dots with, with all of those and all of my life experiences, I've then arrived at this methodology to say this is how it needs to be done and it's not about software it's not about AI it's not about anything not about ABM nothing like that at all it's about an adjustment that needs to be made within a business so that's how I got where I am today uh, I've written books I've sp spoken publicly preached baptized people um, done a lot of different things uh, and I, th I suppose that's it there's, there's nothing really much else to say and if you want to talk about your story give me a call if you want to talk about your business marketing give us a call and, we and we'll see what we can do and see how we can help but we have a very very different approach to every other marketing business out there because people buy people and that's what we've always done and we've told them we've done that through storytelling and that's what we've done for a millennia but that's it from me I hope you enjoyed this and I'll catch you in the next one Bye for now.